you know, I saw your new film at the Cinerama. I, I just love Madison Cassidy's work. Oh, yeah, she's amazing. Yeah. Do you, by chance, know what she's directing next? I can't speak for Madison. Of, of course, of course. Here, let me open this. You know, you should do a Terrence Youngblood movie. <laughs> I, th I think you two would work well together. <laughs> I am. Away. Oh. <laughs> Fugitive movie. My character kills his old man in the kitchen. I take a steak knife out of the block and I slit his throat. Then I drag him upstairs and make it look like a shaving accident. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Did he deserve it? <laughs> what? <laughs> no, Terrence is wonderful with the camera, though. He has this great idea where we shoot the throat slitting through the reflection of a ladle next to the knife block. Something about how the audience can see the danger, but they can't do anything to stop it. I don't really know. I'm just the actor. You know? Genius. But hey, you know. Oh, you need to touch it. Sure, sure. Uh, you know what? Hang tight. I forgot my mirror. I'll be right back. I really got you doing everything around here, huh? I'm just the PA. Hey, where's the... Going somewhere? Restroom? Let's fix you up first. How does a run-through sound before the show? Hmm? A, a rehearsal before the show. Oh, yes, I like that. All right. So you'll enter from behind that curtain on stage right over there. After you enter, you'll take center stage, bow, thunderous applause. Neat trick. And after you bow, you'll take a seat. Now, camera one, the host's close up. Camera two, the two shot. And camera three, the guest's close up, your close up. Impressive. Isn't it? And after some quips, the interview will begin. Any questions? Restroom? Uh, yes, down the hall and to the left. Thank you. Hello. Uh, dressing room A. Yes. I'll be expecting your call with the results. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Good evening, everybody. And thank you for joining us once again as we attempt to answer the question that has plagued my mind for decades, is it too late? I'm your host, Larry Lawrence. Tonight, we have a very special guest straight from the silver screen, but this big movie star is no stranger to our little television community. You know him best as the teenage heartthrob, Roy Rebel St. James from down on St. James Street. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome John Jameson. Come on, John, don't be shy, have a seat. So, John, it's, it's good to have you. Good to be here, Larry. It's <laughs> a pretty good Larry impression. So, John, before we talk about your big screen debut, I'd be remiss if we didn't talk about Down on St. James Street. You spent six seasons playing the most iconic character in television. Filming that heart-wrenching finale must have been difficult. John, remember this is live television? Sorry, could you repeat the question? Never mind that. Let's talk about your new film, working with Madison Cassidy. I mean, when you talk about modern visionaries, her name is high on that list. What was it like working with such an influential filmmaker? She was great. 
You want me to just answer? That's usually how these talk shows go. I, I talk, you talk. <laughs> <laughs> she was great. Working with Madison was incredible. She is, as you said, a true visionary. It's really opened my perspective about how much can go into a piece of entertainment. She just gives careful meaning to every frame. John, a movie about the Constitutional Convention as your first film? I mean, what made you so confident in this part? Some people say period pieces are career killers. <laughs> yep, it, it really was a leap of faith, but uh, as I said, working with Madison is just something you can't pass up. I, I had a chance to see it, John, and let me just say, your performance, absolutely stunning. <laughs> stunning, I, I didn't know you had it in you. I mean, obviously the scripts, the shots, tremendous. Take this as a reminder, everyone. Always know your TV Miranda rights. Anything you say and or do can and will be written about you in the papers. <laughs> How much longer? <laughs> Tell us about your method for this period piece, John. I mean, some reports say that you lived as if it was actually 1787. Didn't use any modern technology, didn't drive, didn't use modern appliances, didn't bathe. I mean, did you really not bathe? <laughs> My acting philosophy is, in order to fully understand your character, you have to become your character. Sometimes that does require extreme action. Like not bathing? <laughs> By modern standards, yes, like not bathing. And for down on St. James Street. I learned to surf, ride a motorcycle, things like that. Uh, I was practicing Rebel's voice really anywhere I could, the post office, the grocery store. Oh, well, you gotta give us a taste of that, John, right? Come on. <laughs> you know, it, it is hard to do without the jacket, you know. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, I could meet you tomorrow, but uh, what's stopping us from meeting tonight? Wow, a true method actor in the making. I mean, can you believe it? Right here. <laughs> Somewhere to be, John? <laughs> come, come on, John. Who died? What? Loosen up a bit. You're on live television. I hope we're not boring you, John. That's enough rehearsing for me. You're very to the point. Do you think that that's why audiences resonate so well with your performances? No. Isn't the show starting soon? You could say that. <laughs> Didn't you hear all the music? John, this is it. You're a great PA. I appreciate the dedication to the rehearsal. I just, it's getting a bit tiresome. Sit down, John. I'm sorry. Let's talk about your new film, John. As the youngest actor, weren't you at all intimidated by some of the supporting actors? I mean, there are some big names in this film, John. Look, I don't know what you think you're doing. You keep checking your watch, John. Where's Larry? Oh, John, I, I thought you knew. Larry will not be interviewing you today. Why? He's dead. What? I'm sorry to be the one to tell you. Why are we still rehearsing? It's late night television, John. A dead host is no reason to cancel the show. You do realize how insane that sounds. <laughs> so, so what, you're just gonna go find some temporary host? God, don't be silly, John. We already did. Look at you. Let's fix that. Oh, sorry. No, what am I doing? I'm not going on. Now, John, where would we be without a little perseverance? Come on. You're playing the role of guest. Isn't that your method? <sighs> All right. Good. It's what Larry would have wanted. Hmm. Curious, though. Huh? To die looking at your own reflection. What? Larry. He died looking at his own reflection. How do you know that? Well, his dressing room is full of mirrors. I'm sure he saw himself go. You mean he died here? Uh, don't worry, John. All the proper authorities, next of kins, morticians, they've all been notified. We're just waiting on the results. Results? You know, foul play. <laughs> For a second there, I thought you said foul play. I'm afraid so. I don't feel right going on if there's an active murder investigation. Now, John, let's not jump to conclusions. They've yet to call with the results. For all we know, it could have been a shaving accident. 
Shall we continue? I'd like to talk to the new host before we go on. Sure thing, John. I just hear he's dying to meet you. Oh, and if I don't see you, break a neck, L leg, break a leg. So, John, I heard you wanted to meet me. Welcome to the show. I see you've made yourself at home. What is all this? That's what we intend to find out. Please, have a seat. That's the spirit. So, John, was your graduation from television to film premeditated? No. A man of impulse. Nothing wrong with that. Is that why you feel you need to go full method actor? No. Well, perhaps we need to talk about some of your more interesting affairs. Disregarding your period piece, I hear you're working on a new film, is that right? A fugitive film, was it? Talk to us about that. I'm not here to talk about that film. Couldn't you at least tell us how you've been preparing for this new role? Anything out of the ordinary? Refraining from bathing, perhaps? It's a new character. My process changes based on the role. So there is a process. Of a method. If you must know, I stayed at San Quentin Penitentiary for a couple of weeks. And I'm planning another trip back there soon. Now that is dedication. <laughs> Anything else? Really, you said it was a, a fugitive flick. I mean, how did you get to San Quentin in the first place? Jaywalking, petty theft, arson, murder? If I didn't know any better, I'd think that was an accusation. What happened to Larry? He was killed in his dressing room. There you go again, jumping to conclusions. We're still waiting on that phone call. <laughs> killed in his dressing room. Died. Looking at his own reflection in the makeup mirror. Your makeup mirror. If I didn't know any better, I'd think that was an accusation. <laughs> Care to do the honors? Shaving accident. Ladies and gentlemen, live from Hollywood, with your host, Larry Lawrence. Is it too late? All right, all right, thank you, thank you. Good evening, everybody. And thank you for joining us once again as we attempt to answer the question that has plagued my mind for decades, is it too late? I'm your host, Larry Lawrence. Tonight, we have a very special guest, straight from the silver screen, but this big movie star is no stranger to our little television community. You know him best as the teenage heartthrob, Roy Rebel St. James from Down on St. James Street. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome John Jameson. <laughs> 